Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at functions of DNA base sequences. There's a lot of vocabulary in here so you need to make sure that you already have some background about uh, DNA, about transcription, about translation, a lot of the stuff. This is the higher level section so you need to make sure that your standard level material is up to par. When you see words like exons and introns that should remind you of something already and chromosomes and chromatids. So I'll try to explain everything. I know you can read so you could probably just read these things off so I'm gonna to try to explain around them as well so when you look at chromosomes like this there are little bits and pieces if you grabbed one end and started pulling it out it'd be like yarn right and it'd be super coiled so you'd have to uncoil it further but eventually you'd stretch it out into a length of DNA that has A's T's C's and G's in it so what we're looking at is what are some possible things that these random uh, lengths of DNA could actually do so some of them are the good stuff they're actually the coding sequences which will go through the process Process of transcription and translation to turn into an actual protein uh, or a polypeptide or some of these polypeptides can join together to turn into larger proteins that's the main point of all of this right the central dogma is that DNA codes for protein and that protein uh, carries out all the functions there's hormones that are proteins enzymes that are proteins all of that so this is the main point of DNA this is the good stuff but we have to know and there's more evidence coming out that a lot of the other stuff that doesn't code for stuff actually does have certain roles. We used to call some of the extra stuff just uh, junk DNA, but they had to update that name because junk DNA implies that it just gets thrown away. So there are some non-coding sequences. So for now, just split it into two main categories, things that code for proteins and things that don't code for proteins. So the next uh, big list down here that you're going to see are going to be all the different things that non-coding sequences could be involved in. And uh, we're going to show a few things uh, showing up over here in this diagram too. So some of these sequences can be areas that will help regulate gene expression. What does that fancy phrase mean? It basically means when we express a gene, we're deciding to turn a gene on. If a gene gets turned on, then uh, different enzymes will help us to turn this gene and translate it, transcribe it and translate it into a protein. If we don't want to express it, we can turn it off. So this is like a little on off switch. And you can have a, a space here with a sequence of a few letters that can be a parking spot and if something parks here it can either turn on or turn off this gene so certain base sequences can actually be sites that regulate gene expression or decide whether the gene gets turned on or turned off do we transcribe translate or do we not transcribe and translate some of these sections can actually code for introns so in the end when you actually get a gene and it's actually transcribed here's uh, something oh no it's kind of covered up right here but what I want to show you is that this is the good stuff the white parts are the good stuff and the gray parts are the bad stuff for now I'll say bad stuff but they can be chopped out if you chop these out and you glue the white pieces back together then you get your actual full message for the coding sequence for the actual protein so there are introns important to know that they only exist as far as we know in eukaryotic genes so in any kind of eukaryotic organism and you have to remove some of the introns in order to produce the mature mRNA. So the mature mRNA is the mRNA that's made after we cut out all the introns that are intruding intruding on the actual message. The exons are the extra special stuff that we actually need. So something else is at the ends of chromosomes, you can have these bits of long strands of DNA. Remember, when we look at a chromosome, it's actually all tangled up. So it's a little... It's really, really uh, dense over here. So at the end, there's these bits that are called telomeres. And these telomeres or telomeres have base sequences that don't actually get replicated when a chromosome gets replicated. So it kind of acts as a protecting cap for these genes that are located over here. So telomeres are examples of DNA base sequences that can protect the ends of the chromosomes and therefore try to preserve a lot of the genes that exist over there. And then finally, uh, there are other types of RNA. The most important type, 
arguably is mRNA. So if you have your DNA, so if you have DNA that's located here, and then you actually need to transcribe it into mRNA, and then that mRNA visits a ribosome, here's what a ribosome looks like, and that is where it actually gets translated into a protein. But there are two other types of RNA. There's something called tRNA. This is hugely important. So I'm assuming if you watch this, you've already learned about translation or it's coming up next, or at least the basic details of translation. And you understand how tRNA is so important in translation. It stands for transfer RNA. Um, the least important of the three types of RNA between mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA is ribosomal RNA. And all you need to know about ribosomal RNA is that it makes up part of the structure of what a ribosomal ribosome is but the real coding RNA is actually the mRNA and the tRNA that's going to help bring the correct amino acid over so what is the point of this it's just saying some of the DNA in here some of the DNA base sequences actually code for the actual tRNA and rRNA that will be used in the cell so there you go there's a list and explanation of some of the functions of DNA base sequences we're paying extra special attention to those that are non-coding sequences because we used to call them junk DNA but we know now that they have a lot of important roles that we must not overlook